The space battles are cool, the villains are legendary, and the world is amazing. But the real question is, what does your lightsaber color say about you? The galaxy of Star Wars is full of adventures, legend, and excitement. Ever since George Lucas brought his swashbuckling space opera to life, the face of movies and science fiction hasn't been the same. Nothing has quite captured our collective imaginations, though, like the lightsaber. Lightsabers come in a range of colors that can tell you a whole lot about who's wielding it. Let's see how those meanings have evolved and what they mean now. It all started a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, when a farm boy met a hermit who said he knew the kid's dad and gave him an ancient weapon from a more civilized time. Fortunately, Luke wasn't looking straight down the hilt when he turned the thing on. From that point on, every kid has made buzzing noises while swinging around broom handles and flashlights in the dark, hoping to channel the Force. In those early days, there were just three colors. The blue of Obi-Wan Kenobi and Luke Skywalker, the green of Luke Skywalker again, and the menacing red of the Sith Lord Darth Vader. That had a lot more to do with there only being four Jedi in the entire series, with two of them being in the same family. One of the biggest strengths of Star Wars is how well it suggested a wider universe lived in by the characters inside. That's what gave birth to what's known as the Expanded Universe. The Skywalker saga, as well as the story of the Star Wars galaxy, became the subject of comic books, novels, and games, and through the Expanded Universe, we learned that the colors weren't just a style choice, but would actually indicate what kind of Jedi you were. That is, more or less. For most of the lightsabers, especially early on in the stories, Jedis could use any of the colors available. As the stories progressed, the colors in their roles became more defined. The blue lightsaber of the Skywalkers and Kenobi were for the Jedi Guardians. These were the heavy force users, the front line of the Jedi who confronted enemies of the Republic. Hands are a hard thing to hold on to in the Star Wars universe, and when Luke lost his in a duel with his daddy, he also lost his dad's old blue lightsaber. For production reasons, Luke's blade went from blue to green to contrast against the blue skies, but in the wider universe, we got a much more satisfying reason to go green. Green became the color of the Jedi Consulars, the Jedi who thought deep thoughts about what it is to be a Jedi. As Luke began to grow into his adopted role as the one to bring the Jedi back, he adopted the Consulars green, reflecting his desire to turn Darth Vader back to the light instead of defeating him in battle. I see you have constructed a new lightsaber. Green would show up again as the color of choice for the wise Qui-Gon Jinn, and much to everyone's excitement, Yoda. When he said he shouldn't be judged by his size, we didn't know it meant that crazy frog leave lightsaber fight kind of thing. That was awesome. The novels and prequels gave us a glimpse into an era that was chock full of Jedi, opening the door for even more colors. For instance, the Jedi Sentinels, a balance between the Guardians and the Consulars who have other sets of skills, sort of a Jedi that do the more subtle work of the Jedi. So subtle, in fact, that Sidious was concerned that they might survive Order 66. There was one notable Sentinel that was big on negotiation who had her own special color, orange. She also had another distinction, up until Baby Yoda stormed our hearts in The Mandalorian, as that she was the only member of Yoda's species we ever saw. And we still don't know what they're called, unless it's Baby Yoda, which we just call adorable. In the Star Wars universe, a lone Wookiee can be an intimidating thing. A lone Wookiee Jedi with a molten bronze lightsaber might just be terrifying. Thanks to its wielder, Lobaka, the bronze lightsaber became associated with strength. Imperial Knights were known for their white lightsabers, the original color of lightsabers before production added colors to distinguish the blades during the fights. The Imperial Knights are probably the biggest victim of the canon divide. The Imperial Knights rejected the Sith, but weren't exactly all about the light, being considered Grey Jedi. Of all the colors, this will be the biggest change from the expanded universe and the current canon. The Sith preferred their menacing red, achieved initially through synthetic crystals where the other Jedi used natural crystals to focus their saber's powers and give them their color. That explanation gets a lot darker later on. We'll get to it. And then there's Samuel L. Jackson, the man that's so cool you have to use his full name every time. Samuel L. Jackson wanted to be in the new Star Wars movies, and while we all want to be in Star Wars, we're not Samuel L. Jackson. He had another request when he joined the Jedi Order, and that was that his lightsaber be purple, his favorite color. So that's what Samuel L. Jackson got. Like the green saber, though, it wasn't just a production consideration. Meaning was added again in the expanded universe. In this case, it comes down to how you make purple that provides a hint towards its meaning. Purple is a combination of blue, the Jedi Guardians, and red, the color of the Sith. 
This means that those who hold a purple saber have developed an understanding of both the light and dark sides of the Force. Not quite the gray Jedi, but at least with a toe in the dark side. Being attuned to some part of the dark side of the Force, as well as the martial ability of the Jedi Guardians, those who wield the purple lightsabers are a force to be reckoned with. Especially if that Jedi is being played by Samuel L. Jackson. There were a lot more colors and variations of colors throughout the expanded universe, including cyan, viridian, gold, and more. Sometimes they had meaning. Sometimes the meaning wasn't always quite so clear. If all of this feels arbitrary and after the fact, well, it is. But that's not entirely unheard of. The color of the Hulk started gray but went green for publishing concerns, but then also became a vehicle for different Hulk personalities. One of the strengths of serialized storytelling is that one author can take a seemingly arbitrary element and build meaning into it. But then things can get tricky when you start trying to determine whose additions count and whose don't. That complication became all the more complicated when Lucas sold Star Wars to the hungriest hippo in media, Disney. One of the very first things that Disney did with their new property was draw a clear line between what was now canon and what was not. And the expanded universe got the axe. What this ultimately means is that any Star Wars stories that are made under Disney's stewardship wouldn't have to honor anything that happened in the expanded universe. Ultimately, Star Wars is how you experience, but any stories going forward will only build on the universe presented in the movies and animated series. That doesn't mean that things start from zero again, though. Series like Clone Wars and Star Wars Rebels have built on the implied mythology of the films in the same way that the original expanded universe did, including adding some of its own spin on the role of color in choosing a lightsaber. The new canon also simplified a bit the makeup of lightsaber tech and the crystal that focuses its power, primarily now through kyber crystals that also give the lightsaber its color. So what are the colors in the new canon? We'll break down the eight basic colors. Blue. First up, of course, is blue, the original elegant weapon from a more civilized time. It was Anakin's lightsaber that Kenobi took off of him after gaining the higher ground. Just like before, this is favored by the Jedi Guardians, the frontline Jedi who focus on their dueling and combat skills within the Force. Green. Another one that remains largely unchanged, green goes to the consular Jedi who contemplate the nature of the Force. It's the color used by masters like Qui-Gon Jinn, Yoda, and Luke Skywalker as a Jedi Master. Not that you should underestimate their skills with a lightsaber, though. Yellow. A Skywalker, at least by name, has carried all the main colors of the lightsaber at one point or another. Anakin and Luke started blue, Anakin then adopted red to go with his new dark side lifestyle, and Luke went green after committing to bringing about the return of the Jedi. Rey, when she takes the Skywalker name, also takes on the yellow saber as a Jedi Sentinel, this time used by Jedi Temple Guards. The role of the Sentinel Jedi being a balance between the Guardians and Consular seems important in Rey choosing that color for her new life as an honorary Skywalker, and as a guardian of the new age of Jedi. Purple. Mace Windu's purple saber stays the same, indicating someone who's adopted some skills from the dark side or an understanding of it. Generally best for when you need someone who won't back down when they have to, say, arrest the Chancellor who is secretly a Sith Lord. White. Everyone's favorite Padawan, Ahsoka Tano, eventually wielded a pair of white lightsabers that she got after purifying the crystals from an Inquisitor's blade. Unlike the other colors, white served to signal that she was not affiliated with a branch of the Jedi or the Dark Side. With signs pointing to Rosario Dawson playing Ahsoka in the second season of The Mandalorian, we might get another look at the white sabers. Orange. Orange is more or less new to the game by being a new part of a game. It was introduced as a pre-order incentive for Jedi Fallen Order. The last time Orange had appeared was in the Master and Apprentice series as a rare Force-attuned non-Kyber crystal. Red. Red is the color of the Sith, and they get their color in the most Sithy way possible, by bumming their Kyber crystal out. They focus all their anger and emotions into the crystal until it burns red. Harsh. Black. If you watched Season 1 of The Mandalorian but not Star Wars Rebels, you might have been surprised by Moff Gideon's black lightsaber cutting him out of his fallen ship. If you did watch Rebels, then you would recognize it as the lightsaber of the first Mandalorian Jedi that was passed around through history before Sabine Wren handed it over to Bo-Katan to lead the Mandalorians. 
We'll have to wait until season two of The Mandalorian to find out how Moff Gideon got his hands on it. While the Skywalker saga has wrapped up with a third trilogy, Disney and the Star Wars franchise is far from done with the Jedi. There are a lot of new Star Wars movies, live action and animated shows, and video games all in the planning stage, and inevitably more to follow. We can expect that more of the old expanded universe canon colors will make their way into the current canon, with some changes and some similarities. As of now, however, most of these projects are just various creators like Taika Waititi and Ryan Johnson at the head of otherwise undefined projects. With the future of the Star Wars universe wide open and a rainbow of colors to choose from, we're bound to see the color variations once seen in the expanded universe. Those are the meanings of the lightsabers in the Star Wars universe. What color is your lightsaber? What color do you want to see come back? Let us know in the comments. And while you're there, make sure and subscribe to CBR for the latest videos in your inbox. Thanks for watching.